Hi, good morning. Let's wait for a few more seconds, a uh, few more minutes, and uh, uh, we can see other people joining. After that, we'll start the session. Hey, hi, Osent. Uh, good morning. Hi, Prashant. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, how about you, Osent? Good, thanks. Yeah, let's wait for one more minute and then we'll start this session. Sure, sure. Yeah, fine. Uh, I think we can start the test and uh, start the boot camp, and then the moment people join, we can uh, admit them. So, yeah, let me present my screen. Just let me know if you can uh, see my screen. Visible yes. No? Okay, okay.
Okay, uh, so today uh, in this bootcamp, we're going to see uh, how to use the Azure DevOps to run uh, the JMeter test, and uh, this uh, will be helpful for projects if you are doing a continuous integration, continuous deployment, uh, because nowadays um, we all know that we do have multiple releases every week, uh, or like every once every two weeks. And again, uh, the importance of uh, the testing as well is also improved. Like for example, we have to test every releases, right? So when we configure our project uh, using uh, this continuous deployment, what happens is we were able to do the testing automatically and for every build. So we can we can do that uh, testing as a testing for every releases and for every build. So this will help us to. Uh, I mean, this. Uh, this. I mean, uh, the Azure DevOps is will help us to reduce the amount of uh, the manual work, and it will help us to do the continuous testing every time whenever the build is being released. Uh, so for that, we need uh, three major things. So one is we need the JMeter. So that is to create the scripts. Let me open. Uh, I'll just show you. Uh, so I have a JMeter here. I'm opening it for now. And then uh, it can be any other tools. Like for example, you can use. Uh, so in in our uh, bootcamp, I'll show you uh, with Visual Studio Code. Using Visual Studio, if you have your Visual Studio Code installed, you can use it for. Uh, uh, integrating it with your Azure DevOps. So you can push and pull all your uh, code and all your uh, uh, your scripts to the Azure DevOps. So you can integrate it and this will helpful. This will be helpful for you to understand like how does the Git and GitHub works as well. And then finally, uh, you need to have your Azure DevOps account. So uh, I hope you must have created your Azure DevOps by now. And if there's any uh, doubts, let me know. Uh, in case if you are, uh, if you have, if you haven't created, or if you're any facing any issues in that part. Uh, hi, Vasanta uh, Sanjay here. So I tried to create uh, the Azure DevOps account. Okay, so hmm. it is failing in the payment base uh, actually. Uh, I don't know why. So I tried with multiple cards, but no. Did you try the same steps I tried? Uh, for right, some okay. reason, you don't need to pay anything. It's like they give you free uh, tier as well, uh, the free access to do. Oh, okay, okay. I'll try again. Yeah, just just watch my video. I think I have given okay. the steps there. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Anybody else have tried and uh, does it work? Uh, yes, I have tried and it works using your okay. video. Yeah, it is working. Good. Okay. Good. Fine. Uh, so then we'll uh, go. I mean, we'll start with this. So firstly, okay. Let me tell you the plan. So we are going. To, what we're going to do is like we're going to uh, export a script from your JMeter to the Azure DevOps, and then we are going to create a release plan uh, so that every time when when a new build has been released, automatically it gets triggered. Right, and then this will be helpful. I mean, if if you showcase your experience on doing this in your interviews and this will be definitely helpful because people nowadays are asking questions like how do you do the shift left testing like what what kind of uh, what's your experience or what's your hands on experience in terms of a shift left testing where else whereas like how do you integrate yourself uh, along with the dev team or along with the software development life cycle so that this will help you to uh, bring a better impression on you have a better knowledge on in terms of performance testing and in the performance engineering right so the first step here is like uh let's create a new project so here on the right side of the screen so here we have new project and click on the new project yep yeah so let me create a new project and let me just check this one 
think this should be a public. Oh, it should be private. It should be fine. Okay. We go back. Create a new project. So it's and uh, just select uh, select the visibility as private. That that should be fine for you to run the test. And then the version control has to be Git, and the work item process can be basic. And then I'm going to create a new project. So here Git is a repository. Uh, Git is not a repository. GitHub is a repository. Git is a mechanism to oh. help you to uh, navigate you through the because Git is something like it will create a mechanism that will help you to connect your computer or your system or your uh, personal storage to the uh, private uh, to the GitHub. Or we, we can use actually uh, along with any any other uh, repo because we are, the mechanism we are using is Git, but the repo we are going to use is the Azure DevOps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, you said GitHub, right? So Azure DevOps, Azure DevOps itself is having the repository, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Azure DevOps is the repo, but the the mechanism, the underlying mechanism, we are going to use is Git. Git. The Git is where we are. Uh, we can convert our machine, uh, or we can connect our machine to the any of the repos, any of the uh, like cloud repo. No, okay. I mean the Git commands is the base. Which is yeah, the... yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. So now we have created a project, and then here um, we have multiple uh, screens. Like we have dashboards. So in case if you have your uh, project in Azure DevOps, you must have a dashboard where there will be multiple widgets, uh, which tells you, which takes you through the uh, project status. Like what what are the tasks that are there in the project, and um, what are the status. So these you can see it in the dashboard. And then you have your boards. With your work items so if you have multiple work items work items in the sense like that will be like the change items and in fact we will see this separate in, in some some time like what what is azure DevOps, and like for example you must be having some uh, task that you have to do and then uh, it will be like in three different states like uh, you're doing i mean like in to do like if yeah if you haven't started any uh task it will be in to do and then if it is in the progress then you'll be moving it to doing and then if it is done if it will be moving it to done so this way you can track the st status of each and every task and then we have backlog so backlog is something like uh, we'll have we have planned a set of tasks to be create to be done so we'll create them in the backlog and then we'll do a sprint review and uh, discussions and then we'll move it to the sprints and same way we have sprints so where it's like we'll have a schedule like for 10 days or 15 days and then we'll keep on the work we'll keep on doing the work and then we'll complete the sprint and then we have the queries like what are all the queries we have we can go through it and delivery plans like how how do we deliver all the releases and analytics view is something like the view of the state is like how how well we have completed the previous sprints and the current sprints and everything so we can see all those details in here and then uh, next to the boards, we have the repos. So repos is something like a repository where uh, we can save our files. We can store our files to this location. And from there, we can connect it to the releases. So this, if you see here, uh, we can see a clone to computer. So if we are using it in the Windows, like to, through the HTTPS, we can use this link. Or if we are using the SSH through, uh, in, in terms of your Linux machines, you can use the SSH mode. But for now, I'm going to use the uh, clone to your computer, the uh, HTTPS one. So either you can click this one, or you can, we have like multiple options. If you have any of these tools in your machine, you can directly navigate it to it. Like for example, if you have Android Studio or C Line or Data Grip, it supports like lots of other tools like Eclipse, and then uh, the PHP Storm, PyCharm, Ruby, Tower, Visual Studio, VS Code. So in our example, we are going to use the uh, VS Code. So I'm just choosing VS Code and then I click on open. So let me close this. And then if I click on uh, Clone in VS Code, so automatically the clone gets created here. Yeah, so it asked me for a location. And let me give the location here. So I'm going to create a new folder for this. So I'm going to name it as Jimmy 
bootcamp and then if i click on select us repository destination okay you can actually this it fine uh what i'll do is let me go back to the screen let me get this one and then Visual Studio, click clone repo. Yeah, click on clone get repo, and then I'm going to paste the URL here. Let me go back to the folder. So automatically the cloning. Okay, I think I need to create a kit in that folder. So let me go back. And here, um, what I'll do is, I'll create a kit here. CD. And I'm navigating to the folder and then I'm going to Create a git. So now when I initiated the git automatically, you can see there is a git for git folder in here, dot git folder, which has all these files, mainly the config file, the description, the head, and everything. So this is something which will help us to keep track of what we are doing in terms of the git. And then uh, let me go back to the Visual Studio code and let me try the clone repo again. Select the folder. Let's try again this one. Access, okay. Access. Yeah, open reset, This by any chance is not going to help us, but okay. What I'll do is let me create the other way. So let me navigate to the folder first, and then from there we can get this project. So now I opened it in my local and then we can connect it to the repo. It again and then we'll try it once more. Just go 
Hold open. If for some reason it's not working, let me open uh, another one. Then Jameter Bootcamp. Yeah, so now we have, we have connected it to the Jameter Bootcamp. Then trust. I think now we are good. So we are in the main branch and we have connected to the JMeter Bootcamp now. So anything we want to do it now, we can do it. Okay. So yeah, so finally we were able to connect it. So what did I do is, let me just uh, quickly uh, recap. So I have created a project in the Azure DevOps, which is JMeter Bootcamp. And then I have a readme file by default and then I have initialized it. And then I have come back to the Visual Studio code. And here I have used connect to instead of clone repo. So I have clicked on connect to and then I have connected it through um, uh, connecting the Azure DevOps and then I have select, I have given my credentials and then I have connected it uh, by selecting the uh, project, whichever I want. So in case if you want, you can just try the same way and just see if it works for you. Uh, so that we can um, fix it or else we can uh, move to the next step. So can you just try in any of your machines and see if it works for you? Uh, Vasant, I just tried, uh, but it is not showing this uh, readme file. Just showing that Azure Bootcamp, that folder. Okay. Do you, okay. Okay. So do you have a readme file inside that? Uh, so usually it comes as uh, add, uh, by default it will ask you for create a readme file. So if you give it automatically, a file will be created or else you can even try uh, creating it now. So can you see, uh, like, what do you see in the Azure DevOps folder here inside the DevOps Azure DevOps folder? Are you able to see any read readme file here? One second, Chiki. Yeah. No, I am not seeing any readme files. Yeah, so so I'll add a readme file. Yeah. yeah, yeah, please do add a readme file. So you're adding it uh, directly in the DevOps, or you're adding it via Visual Studio Code? I added it in the project, uh, like dashboard. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to see it in Visual Studio Code. OK, because if you add it, then you might need to uh, pull your uh, file from there, uh, which is like from your DevOps to your Visual Studio Code. Only then you can see it. It's, it's not like something like uh, a, a exact repli a reflection because we need uh -huh. to uh, pull that file from there. So for example, if I'm telling you like, uh, so, so the always the best way is to uh, add any file in here and then that will actually reflect there. And I mean, like you have to push the changes there. 
so um, fine no worries like so you have added it right for now i added it from a dashboard but uh, fine not fine no worries it. yeah you, you can't see it so what you have to do is go to the source control okay and if you can you share your screen for us yeah so I one yeah, yeah yeah share my screen Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, not now. Have you share, shared your screen? Like, uh, you have, is press, I can see you're presenting. Yeah, yeah. But I cannot see your screen. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see a screen now. Yep. This is that folder, Azure mm, DevOps. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. You can you expand it? Yep. Yeah. So now you have no files in here. Uh, and can you go to the Azure DevOps screen? And go to repos. Yeah, so you have added a file here, right? So yes. um, what you have to do is now come back to the Visual Studio Code, and you have to pull this. So you have to connect it, uh, and click on the source control. Can you see on the third, uh, on the left third one? Yeah, click on that, and then uh, click on the three dots on the top. Three dots. Yes. Yeah, and click pull. Okay, get from uh, okay. Yeah, click cancel. Cancel. I, I click on three dot again. Three dots. Mm, okay, we'll have to do a git pull and push. Okay, it just uh, create, uh, click on the push. Can't push. Uh, Stripe bring pull. Okay, yeah, we have to done pull first. Okay. Uh, yeah, close this, close this, and uh, uh, okay, okay, fine, got it. So, uh, what was the branch name you have? Is that master or main? Uh, can you go to the uh, DevOps again, DevOps screen? Okay. Yeah, so you have main branch, right? But here, if you mm -hmm. see, it shows master branch. If you come to the uh, DevOps, uh, okay. that is the reason you are not able to connect it. Yeah, click on that, uh, yeah, click on that master. And uh, click create new branch. Uh, or, or let me. I, I think we need to clone it. Okay, click on uh, click on that master again, master again, and the bottom. Yeah, and click on that origin main. Uh, can you click on that origin main? Yeah, yeah. So now you are on the main branch. Yeah. Now click on the three dots and click pull. Yep. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, yes. Click on this. So this will actually fetch the files. Yeah. Now, if you if you go to the uh, files section, uh, the first icon on the top. Yeah. First icon. First one. Left. Left. No. Left. Left. Left first. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Let's now see. you got the files. Yeah. Let's so uh, always, I mean, some of us yeah make this mistake. So if the branch names are different uh, so we'll get this issue so just make mm -hmm. sure that we have the branches at the right one so now right, now we are able to see it right so this is the yes. way we have to uh, pull and push so any changes you make uh, and again um, uh, my suggestion or the best practice again in the industry i would say is like uh, we should not merge any changes directly to the main so we have to create a branch and then we have to make all those changes in the branch. Like we have to clone from the branch and then we have to make changes and then we have to push it to the main. So I'll, I'll just show you how to do that now. Okay. And yeah, so thanks, thanks, uh, Hannah, for sharing this. So do you have any other uh, queries or any other issues with this part? Are you you're fine? Oh, uh, wasn't I still aware of this one? Could you please help me how to do it from initially? Yeah, yeah share your screen now. Uh,
Are you able to see my screen, right? Not yet. It's loading. Yep, I can see now. Okay. Hi, everyone. If you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our community. By subscribing, you will never miss out any of our future content and it really helps me to continue creating high quality videos just for you. So go ahead, click that subscribe button and join me in Little Sly YouTube channel and let's keep this in journey going together. Thank you and bye-bye. So uh, this I have opened the, uh, just now itself. Uh, why hmm, should hmm, I hmm. run that one? Yeah, uh, and I open the Visual Studio code. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, close this welcome screen. Uh, okay, can you click on the connect to connect to at the bottom? Can you see? Yeah, connect to yes. And uh, a remote repo, a remote repository. This at the one bottom, one? fourth one. No, no, the fourth one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, the third one. Yes, the third, one, third one. And yep, now you can sign into your account. Yep, you're signed in now. Yeah, I can click close. Close this screen. Yep. And go back to your Visual Studio code. OK. And I can open your folder. Uh, click on your name, name. Click on your name on the top. Can you see your name, Kaif2239? Yes. And JMeter project, yes. Again. Yep, so now you've got your project. And you can see the branch. So you have got into your main branch. You have got your file, right? So now you are connected to your uh, repository to the Visual Studio. Do so we need to create any other branch? I mean, master branch? Ah, uh, yes. I'll, I'll just show you how to create that and how to do that. Oh, okay. No. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Anybody else want to try, or have you already connected to your screen? Or shall we proceed to the next steps? Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, thanks. Then yeah, we'll go to the next steps. I'll just share my screen. Uh, so now uh, let me show you how to uh, create a new branch. So if you go to the uh, at the bottom, if you go uh, here again. So once you click on the bottom uh, uh, on the main, you get these options here, like create new branch or create new branch from. So create new branch from is something like you're going to select your uh, original branch name and then you're going to clone it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select the new branch name. So let me go back again to this one. Click on the main and uh, sorry, uh, let me go back to the main first. And then I'm clicking on main again. So I'm going to create a new branch. So this new branch name will be like develop. And then when I click on enter so it like either ask me okay the, for now the branch is created but it asks me that whether i have to switch to the new branch uh, or open it in new window so for now i'm going to select switch to branch so when i select switch to branch automatically my files like whatever i have in my main branch will be there and then my uh, branch will be changed to develop so if you see here we already had this files in the main branch right I have not made any of the changes. What I did is I just created only the develop branch and that will actually bring in the file. So whatever the files, uh, which is the committed until your last your last commit, so they will be uh, uh, added to your latest branch that you have created. So here, if you see, uh, I have created a new branch, which is develop, and I have all my files in here. And yeah, so you guys can try this and let me know if you're able to do this step and then we can proceed to the next one. Wasn't, can you just show from where you selected that create branch option? Uh, at the bottom, if you click, you get this uh, options on the top, like create new branch, create new branch from open branch on Azure DevOps. I have chosen create new branch. And then I gave the name here. Automatically, the same place you can give the name here. And then click enter.
and shah can you try it you can create uh, yeah, so asking, uh, switch to branch uh, do yeah do to switch to branch yeah do switch to branch if you want to switch to branches it's not a problem just click on this one and we can move to branches so if see if you here see here like you can change whatever branch we want so switching to branch is not a problem we can just switch to any branches which we created yeah i switched to the yeah. branch develop oh, fine fine that's it yeah so I this can way we can read my file in the branch great great yeah uh, so henna were you able to do it uh, yes yes uh, it's okay. just like uh, it is showing a uh, uh, like me uh, instead of main branch it is showing developed for me develop yeah yeah that's it yeah that's it so uh, yes. uh, whatever so this is the same way like if you want to uh, switch between the branches you can just click on the branches at the bottom and then you can uh, click on the branches whatever you want to change like if you have multiple branches then you can uh, select any of these branches which you want to change and then you can automatically move it to those branches so this is the way you can uh, navigate between your branches inside your devops code uh wasant right. uh, do what extensions we need to download for this for visual studio any other uh, uh, extensions yeah for now let me show you so what did i install so i have installed okay, these you might need if you are using your azure as part of uh, your repo so for now i'm using azure so i'm using all these code uh, but i would i I'd, i would advise you not to use uh, too much of extensions because they will like slow down your mission yeah uh, so for now i would say uh, just uh, if you are using github you can um, install github repos uh, github pull requests and i think these two is enough in case if you are using uh, github you are connecting okay. to github others if you are using cube you can use kubernetes and if you are using partial you can use partial and yeah that's it for, for some reason I'm, i was developing something in python so i have installed python debugger and python uh, extensions yeah for that that's enough like for, yeah you can uh, and if you're using you know, workflow like i have some workflow videos as well so I, for that i've used yaml that, that supports you to uh, validate your code so yeah it depends on like whatever you need uh, for now you can use git and github that's that's more than enough if you're using github and rest i think it should work automatically no no worries in that in that part um but actually yeah there are a lot of uh, uh, add ons so you can just choose whatever you want in terms of yeah 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 we are having yeah. a number of extensions yeah 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 true fine only uh, github so, repository and github pull request we need to download for now right? yeah yeah for now if you are using if you are going to connect it to your github repo yes yes fine um yeah so yeah this is how we uh, create the main branch and then this is how we create the developer branches as well so after we created the developer branch we have to make sure that that particular branch has been uh, sent to the uh, github repo because if you see now uh, if you go back to your uh, uh, repo here and if you dra drop down this one so can you see your developer branch here in the uh, repos just check whether you can see your developer branch because any changes that we if, if it is not been uh, reflecting that then we'll have to pull pull it uh, to the repo and i'll show you how to do that so just let me know if you're able to see it otherwise i'll just show you how to do that yes yes it's reflecting you're able it's to see okay, okay. yeah it's oh, okay okay great great yeah so anybody else uh, is following or is anybody else is doing in the chat just let me know if you're able to do it or if you have any facing any issues in terms of connecting it to the devops or if you connect uh, creating branches any issues there just let me know all good okay i'll take it as all good and then yeah so for now what i'll do is uh, let's uh, i'm i'm just going to connect uh, our uh, jmeter project to the developer branch now and yeah let me just open one of the project which i have okay first let me open one of the project and let's let me make sure that i have created everything really good so this is the file which i'm going to use for testing and yep let me just make it you know, like 
10 users and then I've updated to 10. Yeah. And then let me save it. And and okay, again, there is another way we can um, test this as well in case if you want to uh, run this test them randomly, like if, if you want to change your uh, uh, user the amount of threads or number of users and then if you want to uh, change the ramp period yes we can do that and let me show you how to do that as well Uh, we can change this to a parameter. I think I have created a video on this, like how to uh, change this to parameters. So let me add that as well here. And these are the values. So if you uh, uh, change this value in here like this, then that will be helpful for you to automatically run this because most of the tests that I mean, like not all most of this, like every test that we run uh, through our Azure DevOps will be running as a non GUI mode. So uh, we are going to run it through the command mode so it's always better to understand how does this command mode works in mean, the non ga mode works and how to parameters with these values so that you can run different uh, set of tests in your uh, devops the azure devops let me change this so this is going to be yeah the same thing so what i did now is i've just uh, instead of the numbers like direct numbers like 10 or 20 i'm just giving this value so that i can pass these values during the testing in the azure devops right and any changes that you want to make you can just make it here and then i'm going to save this file so i'm just having only one script and yep yeah, so these are the steps which i have and uh, Yep, uh, nothing else. I can, I think I can remove this because otherwise it will be uh, reflecting in your script. So I'm just going to remove this. And I'm just having only the view results tree and the summary report and nothing else. Let me save it. And then I'm going to upload this script. So for that, I'll go to Visual Studio Code and I'm, I make sure that I'm on the developer branch. And then I'm going to add the file. Sorry, um, what I can do is. I can add the file here. So let me go back the bin folder. I just drag and drop. It's just copied. So now you can see the XML version of this script. Um, so here is the script here, and then you can see the name. You can see all the config test elements, the cookie manager, the thread groups. So if you see, uh, we have set up the thread groups in the number. Instead of numbers, you have set up it as uh, the parameters. So if you, you can see the threads, the ramp up, the duration, the loop count, everything has been reflecting here. And whatever the requests and response we have, we can see it here. All the, the constant timer I have set is like 2,000 milliseconds, which is like around two seconds. And everything else, like whatever we have in the scripts, everything else will be reflecting. And now I have set up, uh, I have imported my script to the develop branch. And then I click on this three, uh, sorry, uh, here I'll come back to the source control. And under the source control, if you see, uh, currently this particular uh, project, I mean, this particular uh, script is not being uh, staged. Okay, so for that, what you have to do is like just click on this plus. So this will be stage, stage now, which is like this will be tracked. Before that, it it won't be tracked. So I can just show you. If I, I click down uh, the minus again, so now it is not being tracked. So let me click on this three dot, go to the terminal, click new terminal. I'll just show you uh, how to do that through the command prompt. And if I do like its status. So if you see it was on this branch, so let me go back to this particular branch and then we'll uh, do all these changes here. Uh, so for that, what I'll do is let me go back to my branch and then let me do a good status. So if you see here, um, okay, that's fine. Exception. 
now i'll go again Good status yep so now it says there is no comments so which says like there is no changes so let me again go back to the okay to find what are the branches we have we have to type git and then the branch okay yes okay check out branch that's cool Right. Uh, I think for now this is not working. Okay, let's go back to this normal mode. Right. Okay. Let what we'll do is let's click on this particular. I mean this uh, plus symbol. So we're going to stage it now. So this will be tracked, and then before we commit, so you'll have to add a commit uh, message. So I'm going to add a commit message like adding test.jmx file. And then I'm going to click on this drop down here. Okay, we can either do this way or we can do this click, click, uh, commit and push. And this will commit and then push our changes to the develop branch to the repo, which is the Azure DevOps repo. And if we go back to the DevOps repo, is that okay? Let's see here. And if I refresh it, yep. So now I can see my test.jmx, the same file which we have created. Uh, and uh, yep, I can see it now. So just uh, tell me guys whether you can see it now and we can proceed to the next steps. Uh, Vasan, uh, to try yeah. this out, we need this uh, test.jmx file, right? Yes, any, any file. It's not test.jmx, but it can be any any JMeter file. Any JMeter file is fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. Can I share my screen, sir? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, sure. I drag and drop that one. Uh, if you want, I can even share it, share the file through message. Okay. Let me just check where I can share it. Okay. Uh, so, okay, let me check. Okay, uh, you are in the chat, right? Uh, let me see where I can send it via the chat. Are you able to see my screen, right? Uh, let me check a second. Uh, yep, your screen is loading. Yeah, I can see it now. Yep. Okay. What I did, just drag and drop this for JPEG store or mm. JMX file. Okay. Now, what should I have to do for commit the changes? Uh, can you click on the source control? Uh, which one? Uh, can you see? Ah, uh, no, there is a third icon at the. Uh, you are in the files now. Yeah, can you see one one on that icon? One of the icon, the third one. Yeah, click on that. Yeah, now you have to stage it. Yeah, no, 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 no. You have to click plus because nothing has been added. So you have to click plus and then you have to add the changes. Yeah. Okay. And e means e is added so now we have added your file but you have not committed okay. it yeah yeah so now we have to enter a message and then click on commit and push how should i yeah uh, get push right so good sorry get commit um, no, it will show you like what's the difference. That's it. So no worries. Um, you can uh, you can close this one. I can do the commit there itself. I go to the source okay. control. Yeah, enter the message. Can you see message at the bar at the top? No, 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 message under the source control. Yeah, click on the yeah. Just enter any message like you are adding. Um, yeah. Uh, so for all a uh, quick message, I'm, I've just sent the test.jmx file. I can use it, uh, and I can use that file if you want. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, first commit, yep, should be fine. Yeah, you can add uh, your file, hey, any message, like it's just to understand and uh, in organizations we'll have a kind of a template, so you can use that one. So yeah. now you can use, like you have added the file. This is to understand like what, what changes we made. I did press right? Yeah, sorry? I did to press enter, right? 
yeah yeah not not enter uh, can you click on the close button at the bottom no just uh, no not enter enter will not work for now just click backspace no no click backspace there's a space yeah click on the can, can you see that x thing uh, your commit your changes yeah click on the x and now click commit and push yeah yeah and now this will uh, commit and push your changes so yeah if you want you can go there to your uh, devops and check yep uh, you are in your main branch now. Yeah, go to develop. Yes, yeah. Now you can see your project here in your develop branch, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, Hannah, can you see your? Uh, you see the uh, project? No, can actually, I'm getting an error like open dot username and git. Git, you I'll share my screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. I will stop sharing this too. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I added this. Uh, able to see my screen? Yeah, it's loading. Yep. Uh, okay. So I added uh, a sample JMX mm -hmm. file to Google. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then when trying uh, to do submit. Okay. No, no worries. No problem. Uh, just click on uh, make sure your username. Okay. Uh, click cancel. Okay. And can you click on that? Um, uh, drop down drop down at uh, okay so you're near develop branch that's fine develop plus okay and can you click on that uh, drop down uh, next to the commit thing next to the commit can you see there's a drop down no no, no um, close this one yeah can you click on drop down next to the commit at the end no, no slow below below that below that below okay. below that yeah uh, yeah click on that and click commit and push uh, okay, fine. Click cancel. Click cancel. Yeah. Now what we can do is, uh, can you go to your terminal? Uh, terminal. Uh, now you are in the output window. No, no, no. You are in the output window now. Okay, uh, okay. Terminal. Okay. Yeah. Go to the terminal. Yep. And okay. Click uh, Git branch. Uh, type Git branch. Sorry. Uh, you are in the develop branch, right? Okay, fine. Uh, now do uh, Git push. Type Git push. Or you can okay. Let's try git push or else we'll try git git fetch then. Yeah, you can try git fetch again. Okay. Uh yeah, I think now you can try. Okay, can you just uh uh click on that uh, refresh button near the develop at the bottom? Can you see there is a develop uh, there is a refresh kind of button? No, next to that. This yeah, uh, yeah, click, yeah, click on that, yeah. And click okay. Yes. So this will actually uh, sync your changes. Uh, I think it's done now. Yeah, can I now click on commit and push? No, okay. no we haven't yet committed. And, yeah, just click on commit and push. Now. Yeah. Uh, okay, just a second. Uh, have okay. Make sure you configure username and user dot name. Okay, fine. No worries. Uh, what we can do is uh, open. Uh, go to your uh, folder where you have created this. In your local, no, in your local mission. Local, okay. Yeah. Okay. And open this file. Yeah, open this folder. Uh, not this. Is this the one you have created? Ah, yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. No worries. I think we haven't set up the Git here. Uh, just copy this uh, for location, folder location, uh, the Azure DevOps Bootcamp. Just copy this. Uh, and yeah, copy this and open a command prompt, command window. Okay. And CD and go to that file, CD space, yeah, enter and do a git in it. Yep, and yeah, now you have your git initiated. And now go back to the Visual Studio code and do a commit and push. So now you must, uh, okay, fine, no worries. Uh, close this and go to the folder again, open the folder. Uh, yes, and bootcamp. Uh, is this the one or so, no? I think it's a different folder, I believe. VS Code, Jamie Oh, okay. it's in the desktop. Yeah, it's in the desktop. Yeah, Jamie Is this the one? Yeah, it is correct. 
No, oh, okay, okay. We are. Uh, can you create some in a different folder for me, please? Because I think uh, uh, the. Uh, it is so, longer. Mm. You have it. Yeah, right? uh, meaning this all oh inside Jamie to another. That is not a problem, right? No, no, no. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. We can create any uh, repos in here. Um, and you have it to the next file. This dot kit is a hidden folder, right? Or something? Yeah, it's a hidden uh, hidden folder. Yeah, can you just open back open again? Let's see uh, the uh, and go to view. Yeah, uh, go to view and enable the hidden one. No, on the top. Uh, on the top, can you see? Uh, view, yeah. No, no. Uh, home, share, view. Okay. View, yes. And click on uh, hidden items. Uh, yes, yes. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Now open the git and go to the conf file conf config. Yeah. Open that config. Uh, yeah. Right click and open as Notepad. Yeah. And then you can. Okay, so you have your Azure DevOps here. Okay, let me just compare it with mine just a second. Okay. Okay. Config file. Uh, we don't have anything much. Remote is origin. That's fine. And branch is master. Main develop. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is um. Uh, can you close it again? Uh, uh, go to the main branch again. Uh, Abraham, you want to say something? Yeah, but see, uh, yeah, yeah. We're for, trying to resolve for, that username main issue, right? Yeah. So I, I had the same issue. I was when I okay. tried to commit and push it uh, through the same error for me. So I oh, followed right. the solution. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah, so yeah. When I did that, I'm able to commit and push. Yeah, yeah, just just let us know so that we can uh, try now. Okay, so I went to uh, C program files git, and uh, there I ran a couple of commands. Okay, I'll share okay. that in the yeah, can we... yeah, yeah, please, yeah, yeah, please, please share. It when us, I yeah. That I was able to commit push the uh, JMX file. Fine. Uh, can you just show us? Uh, okay, yeah, here we have, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We did not do the config thing. Okay, so I think it looks like we haven't configured previously. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, can you open your GitHub? Uh, um, sorry, the command prompt, uh, Anna? Yep. And uh, yep, we can run these commands uh, with your name. Uh, just type git config. Uh, if you can see in the message, it's there. And add your name. Uh, it's, it's your GitHub name. Yeah, go to your go to the message and you can find it and then you can give your email as well and then you can restart it. Yeah, you can see it in the messages. Uh on the uh, right side end, can you see 24 people? Yeah, next to that, yes, and take the message. Yep. There are like two commands. So run the first one first uh, with your name and then your second command. Yep. And go to the command prompt. So this basically comes if you haven't uh, configured previously. So it's better we can configure it previously. Uh, Shah, did you face this issue or is it working fine for you? I think it worked fine for you, right? Uh, when it comes to Git Ignore, when I was adding, it was not coming to me. But uh, uh, okay, the folder then, was mm. connected. Okay. But when I was trying Git, it is not getting uh, getting fatal error. It is showing something oh, fatal. It's it's not working now for you? Like you are, you are not able to do it? Uh, but actually, I have done new folder. For that, uh, oh, oh, it okay. was added. Okay, can I see okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will just uh, complete uh, for Hena and then we'll come back to you. Uh, yeah, I can do the commit push, uh, Hena. Yep, I think it's worked. It worked now. Yep. Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks, Alfred. Uh, now I can yeah. see that's in. In your DevOps, right? Okay. Yeah, if you go to develop branch, you must see it. Yeah, yeah yes. Working fine. Yeah, so so for going forward, you you not find any issues, but yeah, this is another way to fix this. It's just you have to configure your Git uh, in your machine, so that will help you helpful for you to understand things. Fine. Uh, yeah, Sha, you can share your screen now. Thanks, thanks, Anna. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, just a, a clarification, mm -hmm. So before doing uh, any push or uh, any changes, we have to add this username and email if. Git is not. No, this is this is a one time. This is a one time thing. Uh, so you have to configure this for the for like. Uh, actually, we should have done this in the other way. So we should have configured this GitHub because this is another set of steps. Like we have to configure our username, we have to configure our mail, and everything uh, before we do the GitHub. But yeah, that should have been a separate one. But still, we have come up uh, uh, through this. We are not able to do it. But yeah, that's that's another separate thing which will. Uh, to the Git session some sometime uh, next week uh, after that, but yeah, this is how we have to configure it. This is the initial steps we have to configure, and then we'll have to do all the changes, right? But okay. for now, going forward, you won't need this again because you already configured it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are you able yes, to see my screen? Yeah. Yes, I can see now. Uh, see, when I was trying to git branch dot git, it is saying mm -hmm. something from not a git repository. It was uh, not working. How... Oh, fine, fine, no worries. Yeah, sometimes what happens is it won't get connected. Uh, okay, okay, fine. So, are you in the right directory? Yeah, um, right directory. Uh, already, already, I did. No, in your, in your, go to your local, local folder. The local folder you have, right? Yeah. Okay, so you are, uh, you are in the uh, the downloads folder. Yeah, downloads folder okay. and, and uh, can you go to the Visual Studio Code? Yeah. And uh, are you in the download folder now here? No. Uh, yeah, so you have to navigate to download folder. OK. Then only it will work, right? Yes, yes. Because if you are in a different folder and you are trying to connect, you are not able to connect it, right? So you have to go to your uh, exact folder where you have your uh, are you connected it already? Then you have to do it from there. Yeah. Okay. What are downloads now? Yeah. And now go inside the uh, DevOps, the bootcamp, I think the different folder you have inside it, right? Yeah, just go inside that. Yep, bootcamp folder. Yep. Yes, now you can uh, check for the files and then you can do the changes here. Yeah. First, I do, I need to run dot git, right? Mm, not required for now. I think you must have it already, right? Uh, did you have your GitHub already set up in your machine or you're doing it for the first time? No. No, I think uh, long back it worked. I don't know. It's uh... fine. Fine. No worries. We can we can check it for now. Uh, just do one thing. Go to your uh, uh, source control. Yeah, now you are in source control. And uh, did you add the file already? Uh, can you close uh, it now? Added. Oh, you have added already. Okay. Uh, go to your uh, file. Yeah, you already have it. Fine. Then no worries. And uh, go back to the source control now for me, please. Yes. Yeah, and click. Uh, we don't find any files here for some reason. Can you go to the develop branch uh, in the DevOps, Azure DevOps? Because I think you can see there. Uh, no, no, no the, to the Azure DevOps, to the the interface, the web interface. Yeah, and yeah, you already have that file. Yeah, it's it's already there. It it came there already. So no. Yeah, no it's there. No, yeah, it's, right? it's already there. Yeah, yeah, it's already there. Okay. So it's it's not a problem. Yeah, you have already uh, okay. pushed it to the. Um, I should have, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is our like, just make sure you're on the right folder and from there you can do it easily. Yeah. So, anybody oh, else has any, yeah, thanks, thanks. So, anybody else has any, 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 any doubts? Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So, does anybody want to try uh, these steps? Let me know we can connect or else you can go to the next steps.
right uh, i think everybody is good okay so yeah so now you have your uh, jmx file here and uh, the next step is we'll have to create the releases uh so there are two things like one is you can uh, directly use your develop branch uh or you can use your main branch as well so for now uh, what i'll do is uh, the next step is i have made all the changes to the develop branch like i have imported my file to the develop branch and then i have to merge it to the main so i'll create a pull request so this pull request will uh, tell me that i'm going to merge it to the main branch right so if you see on the top, we are in the develop branch and I'm going to merge it to the main branch. So in case if you do it in the other way, you will not find. So can you see here, there are no changes to be merged between the main to the develop, right? Because main does not have the new changes. All we have is the changes in the develop branch, right? So just click it again. And now if you see, we have one file. So you can see which files you have changed are you are going to merge it to the main. And then if you go to the commits, you can see the commit message that you have given. So adding test.jmx file and who did that and what is the commit num uh, the hash code. So you can see all these. And then coming back to the files and then to the overview. So you can add the title, so for example, like adding test.jmx file and you can add the description as well. Like for this particular project, I'm going to add this particular file. And uh, if you have any reviewers, like for example, in your team, then you can add those reviewers name and then they will review it. And then once they approve it, automatically the file will be merged to it. Or it's not a people or it can be a team as well. So anybody in the team can uh, approve it. And if you see, uh, we can either create it as a draft or you can either create it directly. And for now, I'm going to just create a pull request. So once I click the pull request, this will be uh, going to the reviewer for approval. And uh, if someone uh, in your team can review it and they can approve it, they can very well do it. Or else in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to approve it myself. And once it is approved, I'm going to click on the, so if you see, we have like multiple options here. I'm going to click on the complete. So once in the complete, we'll get these options, like whether I have to uh, do a merge, no fast forward, or I have I can do the scratch commit, or I can do a rebase and fast forward, or I can do a semi-linear merge. For now, I'm going to do the scratch commit. So this will actually uh, commit my changes to the, uh, or add my changes to the main branch. And I click on the complete merge. So now if you see, I have completed this pull request and it's been successfully added. In case you want to delete your source branch, you can very well do it, not a problem. And then let me go to the branches. So here I have only my main branch, my uh, develop branch has been deleted. So let me go to the repos, the files, sorry. And then if I see, I do not have my develop branch because once I have merged it automatically, it will be deleted. So now if I go to the main branch, so I'm on the main branch and I can see the test file which I have seen. So yeah, you can also try this uh, create pull request and do this merge part and let me know if you face any issues. If all fields, if anybody wants to share the screen, yeah, you're welcome to share. Yeah, Hina or Shah, do you want to share your screen and do this pull request? Yeah, yes, I have done this. No, okay. no, I've done this. No okay. issues, right? Okay. Uh, one okay. clarification, Masan. Why we selected yeah. Squash? Uh, Squash. Uh, what are the other options? Or is it all? Uh, yeah. So, uh, other options are like you can uh, create uh, so okay so what happens is uh, let me sh explain it to you so usually uh, our uh, files right so whatever we create so for example we must be having uh, multiple uh, lines so for example uh, if we create a new project it will be from the main right for for, for example it will be in the main branch okay so it'll be like a straight line uh, all the changes that we make it will be in the main branch and now we have created a developer branch so it is, which is a separate branch here right so this will be in a developer branch so what we are doing now is uh, the squash commit so we are going to merge this changes to the main right and automatically mm -hmm. our changes will be in the main and the other branches will limit uh, remote so there are other cha changes where you can merge it here or and also you can have your separate branch uh, you can have your developer branch separately right and you, you have like multiple branches 
like mm-hmm. someone else like if you are creating a branch and i'm creating a branch and someone else in the team is creating a develop branch right so all these will be running in different branches and they can merge their changes here but still they will be working on their branches right so they will uh, merge their changes but still they they will have their own branch it won't be deleted okay. but when you do squash commit automatically what happens is you are committing your changes and then you are squashing your branch mm, okay, okay right uh sometimes what happens is like it's not sometimes like most of the times what happens is like people will have several branches like feature branch develop branch and then mm-hmm. uh sprint branches something like that okay so they'll keep on adding their changes and sometimes what happens is like people will squash their branches and then they will uh clone a branch clone their branch from the main so they'll uh, create a new branch a cloned one from this right so same way that that's the reason so in in this particular uh, pull request what we did is we have our develop branch and then we merged it with the main and then we squashed it we squashed this develop branch so it's been removed so now we have only the main branch okay right? yeah so that's that's how this uh, the git thing works yeah so now going back to yeah 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 sure no 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 uh, yeah, i did okay, okay good so it is working fine yeah this. okay okay great uh, one, one more one more doubt Yeah. Uh, how yeah, can we see the changes now in the Visual C code? I mean, we have did changes to the master branches, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So now, if you go to the source control, uh, and if you go to your uh, branches, okay, let, you can just uh, refresh this one, okay? Because you do not, since you do not have this, you, you can, if you go to the main, you can just only see the main branch, and you won't be able to see other branches. You can just uh, click on this button, and if you do a sync, so if you do the sync thing, automatically your uh, changes will be pulled and pushed. So now, if you click on this main branch, you won't be see, able to see any other branches. Okay. So for doing this, you have to sync your main branch. Where? Uh, let me share. Yeah, yeah. I have not yes. the changes, but it is. Are you able to see my screen, right? Uh, not yet. Yeah, now I can see your screen. uh yeah just a but second but where is uh, the main loading. branch yeah. can you go to your source control uh, at the bottom can you see the develop can you at the bottom yeah, can you see not there. yeah click it on was... the sync click on the sync yeah, yeah. yeah. unable to sync the repository because it's already I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell you just click on develop again click on the develop again and click on the main branch yep and click continue Yeah, now you have your main branch alone. Go open the geometry project, expand it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have files. So if you go to the bottom, the main thing, click on the main to see the branches. You can see only the main branch, right? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's, That's what it. I can't fit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So what what we should do uh, actually is we'll have to uh, every time like before we uh, make the changes. What we have to do is we have to. Uh, actually uh, move to our main branch before we delete it uh, before we do the merge so it's always good, good practice so that we we won't be getting this confusion yeah yeah right yeah yeah uh, henna you asking something yeah i had that same issue which okay is, is it working fine now yeah it's working oh okay okay great yeah so yeah let's go back uh, to the devops yeah so for now yeah so this is how it works and uh, we'll go back to the azure devops and we'll start creating the releases um azure devops yeah so now i'm into the azure devops and then so to create okay so here if you see uh, this repos contains all these changes like whatever the commits that we did i mean oh it's, it's not reflecting okay yeah, sorry i uh, just let me know if you can see my screen Yep. Uh, so uh, here uh, we can see, like, if you go to the repos and files, yeah, files, you can see the files and then the branches, whatever we have created, and we want to create it here. And then coming back to the commits, so here you can see whatever the commits that we have did. So initially, I did a readme file. That's the first commit, and then I have merged the adding text dot jmx file. That's the second commit here, and then I did a merge to the main branch. And then if you go to the pushes, so here you can see what are the pull requests we did. 
and then when you come to the branches so here we can see what are the main uh, branches we had and if you go to the all branches you can see all the branches and then if you go to stale we so since there are no stale branches so it won't be there and then coming back to the tags so if you have any tags you can see and then coming to the pull requests you can see what are all the active branches so if you have like multiple pull requests you can see it here or if you already had any uh, branches like previously any pull request you can see it here and since they were like completed uh, it's been like in the completed list so coming back to the pipeline so here we are going to create the release branch uh, the branch which are going to run the test so going to the pipelines and then to the releases i'm going to create a new pipeline and i'm going to close this for now and for the first thing is like we have to create add an artifact okay, come on source type it can be empty as empty job yeah so stage on the source that's right Yeah, so when you click on this add an artifact, we usually have multiple uh, set of artifacts. So you can either choose your Azure DevOps as your uh, uh, artifact or you can use GitHub. So in fact, I'll just show you if we have time, I can just show you how to do a connect through the GitHub as well. And then if we have your TFVC, you can connect it. So TFVC is like something like your uh, another uh, a repo model thing. And then if you have your Azure artifacts, you can connect it through the Azure artifacts. If you have a GitHub releases, you can connect it through the service connection. And if you have any of your Azure containers also, you can do it Azure Container Repo and Docker Hub. Yes, you can very well connect it. If you have, if you want to connect to Jenkins, yes, you can very well connect to Jenkins as well. You can establish your connection. And then once you connect it automatically, you can um, uh, take the Jenkins job and you can connect it. But for now, in this example, uh, we'll see how to connect your Azure repos. So just go to the Azure repos and then the project this time we're going to connect to the jmeter bootcamp and once you select a jmeter bootcamp you can see the repos so i'm going to select this and once you select this you can uh, see the list of branches we have so for now i'm going to choose the main branch and then the default version it's always best to choose this one latest from the default branch so that you always get your latest uh, branch or else if you have a particular commit which you want to choose you can choose specific commit so that you and if you know this commit as well so we can see the commit. So, for example, in this in our scenario, uh, we have adding J test at JMX file the latest commit. So, I can just choose this. In fact, if you want to choose it, or else specify the time of release creation. So, we can choose the specification. We can specify the time. But for now, I'm going to choose the latest from the default branch. And yeah, the source alias is the same JMeter Bootcamp. And then click on add. So, now I have added my JMeter Bootcamp as the artifact. Uh, can you just guys try this and uh, let me know whether you are able to connect your artifact? Uh, my screen is something different, wasn't? I mean, apart from your yeah, screen. even my screen is different. Oh, can you can you share? Yeah, just one of you. If you can share, you can just go through it. Yeah, I can share. Yeah, please. Once you're able to see my screen, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yep, I can see your screen now. Yep. Okay, so I think uh, the releases is not been enabled for you. Um, yeah, it's the same for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, just a second. Let me just check. If anybody else is facing the same issue, or you are able to um, get past this? Same just a second, okay, let me just see. Yeah. Now, Alfred, what about you? Uh, same screen, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, just a second, let me just see. Yeah. Okay, um, let me go to the project settings. Okay, let me open a new one. Settings. Leave. Okay. 
secured. Okay, so if it's not here, then let's go to the organization settings. Security. Okay, uh, so you are okay. Can you uh, go back to the Azure DevOps, the main screen for me, please? The main screen, Azure DevOps, yeah. And can you click on the organization settings at the bottom? Organization settings, no, at the bottom, yeah. And can you search for uh, releases on the top and in the search settings? Can you search for release? No, no, on the left, no, no, on the left, 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 no, no, you are on the right. Can you come to the left? Organization settings. Uh, under that, uh, search for release, release. Yeah, enter. And click on release management. Yeah. Okay. It looks like this. Make sure the URL is correct. Yeah, click on go back home. And uh, open this project for me, please. Open this project. And go to the project settings. Project settings at the bottom. At the bottom, can you see project settings? Yeah, and uh, just a second, let me just compare it to mine. It's a private one, that's fine, okay. And here, um, overview, yeah, that's okay. Repos, you're fine. And go to the uh, permissions, a uh, team permissions, everything. Let's see one by one. Permissions, yeah, you have no problem. And then come back to the project configuration. No, it's it's about boots and coming to the pipelines, the agent age come to the agent pools, the pipelines, agent pools. Yeah. Okay, you have it. Okay, come to the parallel job, parallel jobs, the next one. Mm, okay, and come to the settings. Settings. Uh, okay, limit variables. Okay, yeah, scroll down. Yep. Repos, you're fine. Artifacts should be fine. What we need is in the pipelines. Uh, just a second, let me just compare it with mine for now. You need to be. Okay, uh, can you scroll up for me, please? Scroll up and go to the uh, uh, members. So the t uh, the teams, yeah, the teams. Uh, okay, you have a team here, and go to permissions, permissions. Yeah, and here um, you have to be a member of. Uh, can you click on the uh, build administrator? The build, yeah, click on that. And uh, 
click on the members 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 at the top yeah. yeah can you add yourself here i just we just need to add yourself to all these groups and search for your name yeah so add add your name yep save and same thing like for everything and go back to the permissions again yeah and make sure uh do you have any save option or you can just go back yep yeah i think you're good yeah go back to the permissions again on the end at the end uh under the general yeah under the general yeah under general permissions yep Okay. And uh, yeah, just add yourself for all these like contributors, yeah, contributors and project admin and release administrators. So make sure you are added to all these. Yeah. And click on this. Uh, yeah, add and then add your name. Now you are already in the project. Okay, fine. Now, now can you go to the releases again? Let's see. Uh, just close it. Uh, click cancel and do a quick refresh of your screen. Uh, just refresh your screen and then you can go back to the releases and see whether you're able to see it now. Yeah, open your project, JMIT project. Oh. Yeah, and go to pipelines. Uh, can you refresh it again for me, please? Uh, no, I think not the screen. Uh, okay, then go back to the project settings again. Project settings, please. And go to the uh, permissions. And uh, yeah, go to the um, project admin. Yeah. Members. Yeah, you already have it. Click on the member of. Member of. Uh, project valid users. OK, go to settings. OK, I think this should be fine. OK, now go back to the permissions again must have it by now yeah go to this yeah permissions again and uh project yeah project valid users yeah project valid yeah we can add yourself here It's already in direct, yeah, you're already direct or indirect. Okay, fine. Yeah, click cancel, cancel. And try for the other group as well, and then uh, we can do, uh, we can just. We don't have that one. Uh, yeah, and then release admin. Yeah, go to members. Add. Yep, again, go back. Okay, I think, yeah, now you're good. Uh, can you just log out once and then log in again? So that the changes might reflect. No, I can better log out. Yeah, just sign out and then yeah, sign again. Yep. Yeah, now you can type on dev dot azure dot com. Yep. This one, right? Uh, Start no, free. not. Uh, oh, yeah, just try that. Yeah, just try that. Start free with the GitHub. Yeah. And then you can sign in. Yeah. Give your name. Yes. Yeah. Now, can you open your project? JMeter project. Yeah, and go to pipelines. Nope. Okay. Uh, can you click on the uh, on the right side top? Can you see uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a name MK and near that there is an icon. Can you see that? Yeah, near that there is an icon. No, near the near your name, there is a small icon. Yeah, click on that. Yeah, click on that. 
and uh, go to permissions permissions yeah and uh, okay click on reevaluate permissions personal access token authorizations it's fine we membership uh, is effectively okay fine i think okay now can you go back again because if you click on re, uh, click reevaluate once again reevaluate permissions and then yeah it should work fine yep permissions and reevaluate permissions yep fine i think this should be real yeah now go back to your project and jamie the project yes and repo come on automated build process and go from code should be there okay let me just check uh hannah you are facing the same issue or i'll check you go yes, the yes. Same, issue? same screen oh. Oh, okay okay let me just open solution. So status should be fine. My plans Let me just check my screen. Um, settings and uh, permissions. Members Okay, uh, can you go to the uh, uh, project settings under that? Uh, if you can click on uh, repos, go to uh, project settings, yeah, and click on repos, repositories, yeah, click on the repos, repositories, repositories, yeah. repositories, yeah, yeah, click on that, and then click on uh, security at the end. No, no, no. Uh, security, can you see there? security at the last at the top oh, no, above your project can you see security yeah 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 click on that and uh yep so here it's in here that's fine um Edit policies, okay, that should be fine. And create tag, okay, read. Minus permissions not set. Yeah, man, okay, you can just change it. Okay, that that's not, not set only, but yeah, that's fine. No, but yeah, I can just allow it. It should be fine. No, manage permissions is fine. You can allow it. No problem. It's not going to make any changes. Uh, I mean, like not big differences, but still, yeah, we can try it. So, contribute, create repo. Yeah, you, we we by default we have all these. Like, you are able to create a repo, right? So that should be fine. Manage on some rename repo. Yes. So I think this should come under your uh, organization settings. But yeah, let me just check. All these permissions settings. Taxes and then policies, permissions, permissions. Yep, we do have all these permissions over here. Let me just check. Okay, 
uh, what we will do is uh, go back uh, to the main screen, to the main screen, uh, to the Azure DevOps, no, again to the, yeah. Click on the organization settings at the bottom. Can you see organization settings? Yeah. And go to security permissions, security permissions. Um, security permissions. Can you see the third one under the, yeah, click on that. And click on the project collection administrators. Yeah, click on that and go to members. Uh, yeah, you are there already. Fine, no worries. Go to settings. No, nothing is there in settings. Fine, no worries. Uh, come back to the other one, the project collection. Yeah, build administrator and everything. Yeah, just let's check whether you have your membership access. Yeah, you can add it, add yourself here. Yeah. yeah, same way you can check for other groups as well. Uh, wasn't just one query uh, like uh, when uh, you sign in uh, like if you are a new user to uh, mm -hmm. azure devops uh, mm -hmm. and you sign in by your uh, mail id so mm -hmm. uh, by default doesn't it count you in all the uh, things like mentioned over here in all the metrics is kind of uh, yeah so the by default we don't get access to the releases because that's what is happening to us like we do not have access uh, to it but i think there is some changes which we have to do and that will actually give access to um, uh, us to create the releases so that's the reason you are you're not able to uh, see that release option so that's what i'm trying to find because i think i, I can't fit it long back so i couldn't okay. exactly remember what was the made change i made but yeah i'm just trying to um, I replicate the same thing so that we can all try that. I'm just trying to find where exactly is it. So we're all adding all this to all all things. Well, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, what's that? What's that saying? So I was adding to this one. I mean, groups for the mm, my. Mm. Sorry, yeah, it was the. Service. Fine, we'll, we'll try some more time or else I can just go back again and then I will uh, I'll update you in the chat like oh, how to do this process. But for now, yeah, let's let's try a few more options and then we'll mm -hmm. settings. I think it, this should be a universal setting. But Permissions. Permissions. Yeah, like, uh, once you add it, you can come back again and you can just check in your. Okay, or else we, we'll try one more thing. Uh, uh, just go back again to your project for me, please. And then we'll create a pipeline and then we'll trigger something then we'll see whether it's reflecting yeah just go back to the uh jamie Jim, project yeah and go to pipelines yeah go to pipelines click on the pipelines yeah create pipeline yeah and uh select azure repos git yeah and select the geometry project and show more show more uh can i scroll to the bottom uh, no, I think it doesn't. Have, okay, fine. Uh, scroll to the top. Sorry. And click on the starter pipeline. Yeah, and click save and run. Yeah, save and run. Now click on the job now, job. Click on that, yeah. And click on, uh, okay, now it's failed, no host parallelism, okay. Uh, yeah, so now uh, I think we must need to uh, fill out a form, yeah. So that's what we missed. Uh, can you click on that uh, error thing, that error, no hosted parallelism? So I think that's the reason we were able to connect it, yeah. Click on that, yeah, click on that uh, error, yeah. 
and now they will give you a link. Uh, can you go to that no hosted parallelism, that full line to the end? Yeah, to the end. Yes, yes. Yeah, now copy that uh, URL request alone, just from the HTTPS thing, from the HTTPS. Yeah. Mm, yep. No, no, no. Uh, just from the HTTPS, not the entire uh, URL. If you click on that, uh, paste that URL, you can find. I pasted only that one. No, no. It, only we need the HTTPS thing. Yeah, you can just remove everything else. Yeah. Yeah, just remove everything and paste it. Yeah. Yeah, enter. Yep, now you have to enter your details here. Same name we have to give up. Huh? Yeah, yeah, your name. Yeah, same name. Yeah. Whatever you have in your uh, Azure DevOps. Yeah, I think everybody else, uh, we can do it for, for now. Yeah. So that this will, um, I think from one or two days, they will approve your request and then you can start using it. I think this will actually give us access to the release, I believe. Yeah. And your email address, which you have used for configuration. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, and the name of your organization. So you you must have right after your dev .com, the name. Yeah, you have given. Yep. Yeah, and you can use select private. Yep. Yeah, and submit. So if you check your email, I think by tomorrow or after tomorrow you'll be getting an approval email. So once after that, I think you can view your uh, releases, and you can start doing it. Right, so you you guys okay. also can uh, apply for this, yeah. So for now, I'll just share it in your in my screen how to do it, and then you can uh, after this once you get your permissions, you can start creating your releases, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So let me can share my share screen. screen. Yeah, yeah. I can stop sharing. I'll just share my screen. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, yeah, you can see my screen. OK, yes. fine. Uh, let me go back uh, to the DevOps now. So yeah, like I showed you, uh, I have created uh, uh, the artifact. I have connected my artifact through the Azure DevOps. And then I'm going to add the stages, right? So I have to click Empty Job. Then I'm going to add the task. So just make sure I'm the stage owner. So the stage name, I can set it up like uh, Jmeter low test. Then click, and then when I click on this job, so here I have my agent job. So agent is something like, so this is your mission, which where you're going to run your test. So in case if you have any other missions, you can connect it. Uh, through this, so if you have like multiple, uh, so this is something like a uh, uh, load generator we have in in other tools, like we can use this machine. So this is where we are going to run the test because the test we are running it will not run in our local machine. It will run somewhere in this agent pool machine, right? So that's what this agent pool stands for. And uh, if you have any execution plans, you can use it or else you can just uh, leave it as default, whatever we have. So we're going to run the JMeter uh, bootcamp it's artifact download. And then specify the time of release of creation. Yes, I'm not going to make any other changes for this screen. Other than if you have any other changes to your agent pool, we can change it or else you can just remove it. And uh, I'm going to add the task. So just click on this plus symbol. And the first step is I'm going to add the uh, JMeter installer. So just click on JMeter installer and you'll get this one. And I'm going to click on add. And after that, so I'm going to run the 5.6.3 here. So that's the latest version I have. So I'm going to add this here, and then I'm going to add the command line mode. Uh, was that how yeah. did you come on J 5.6.3? I mean, could, could you please show that one one more time? Yeah, here. Just type. No, earlier, just type. earlier screen. Well, you know, this is the one. This is the agent tab, which I, uh, the task which I've added. That's it. So uh, how to do this, you are seeing. So click on okay. this plus symbol and search for JMeter. That's it. OK. And here, a JMeter tool installer is the uh, plugin that we have to add. 
and just click on add automatically it will be loaded here that's it okay yeah sure so if you want to remove it you can just click on remove because if whatever version you here add here that will be uh, downloaded uh, during your testing so that's the reason we have to because since i have created my script in 5.6.3 i have to use the same version i cannot use the lower version i can use the upper version but i can use the lower version higher version will work but lower version won't work and then now we have a command line script so here is the place where we are going to uh, use the command line where we are going to use it to run the test right for now i'm going to just uh, i'll just leave it for now i'll add it now and then um so okay let me add it for now command line yep so i already have it ready the commands here with me so yeah so this command is the one so here i'm going to so minus n is will tell us that we are going to run this test in a non gui mode and the test name so test.jmx is the file name so i'm going to use minus t the test file name and then minus l is the result so minus l denotes that this is the results file and then i have given the threads the ramp up the loop count everything as uh, empty like i have parameterized it so i'm going to pass these values here so in case if you want to add your uh, threads like if you want to run 100 users or like 200 users you can just make the changes here you do not want to uh, just navigate all the time into the script and then you have to make the changes instead you can do all these changes here and then i'm going to run this like for two minutes or so and then uh jmeter and then uh the folder that we are going to paste the results so this is the folder we are going to paste the results then going to the advanced I'm going to choose the working directory yep so this is the working directory where we have our file i'm going to just choose this and then coming to the control options yep i do not have anything to change here so in case if you want to add any environment variables you can add it otherwise you can just ignore it and nothing in the output variables for now and then the next one is once you make all your changes you're going to upload your release artifacts so, uh, which is like the releases so i'm going to change uh take this publish release artifact so this will upload our release artifact to the logs so once you complete a test automatically you can download your results from there and then path or folder to upload if yep, i'm just choosing uh, this location So now let me just uh, change it to 60. So let's complete the test real quick. And then once you make all these changes, uh, go to the save on the top. So I'm going to just save this file. And once you've saved it, you can click on create release. And here, if you want to change it to manual, you can just choose this one. So this particular stage will be moved from automated to manual when you are creating the release. So for now, okay, let me just choose it as manual because I'll start the test on my own. And the source alias is the same thing. And release description is something in case if you are releasing it as part of some uh, some changes, you can just add it as I'm going to just add it like JMeter load test. And then I click on create. So now the release is created. The release one has been created now successfully. And then it's not deployed yet. So I'm clicking on this deploy. Then the comment is going to be JMeter load test as part of jmeter camp and then i'm going to click on deploy so now the changes will start running so now it will run from our agent job the agent pool where we have to click on refresh so now we have start the test is started so the first step is like uh, it will connect to your agent pool and now the second step is it's it will start installing your jmeter so if you see, we have the 5.6.3 will automatically start to get installed in our mission, uh, in, which is in the local, the agent pool mission. So any doubts so far, guys, with this setup, the release thing? Or else I can show you again, but yeah, any, any doubts so far? So some, I mean, we need to do this one by hands on because we don't have access for that one. Once we got access, then we'll. Uh, yeah, you can, you can try it. Yeah, you can try it and let me know the chat. Yeah, we can uh, catch up sometime and then, yeah, we'll just. Uh, it's the same steps. It's the same steps every time. So once you get the permissions, yeah, you can try it again. Yeah. Sure.
uh, wasn't like jenkins can we schedule this uh, test here Hmm. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you that. I'll show you how to do that as well. Yeah, we can have schedule. We can uh, change it from automated to manual. Yeah, I'll just show you everything. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah, no worries. Uh, Vasant, I have one doubt. Yeah, yeah. Please. So, in we are doing master slave configuration, right? In local mm -hmm. example, and mm -hmm. we are setting up the all the on-prem on-prem uh, VMs we have, right? We are self-hosting mm -hmm. in an agent pool. Yeah, okay, yeah. So. Master configuration. How we can run this test? Like one will be the controller and other will be the master. Yeah, yeah. So the command which is we are giving as a, the, uh, the, there we are setting up all the remote host in user properties, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? yeah. So in in this pipeline, how we can test that? Like this will be the controller and this is the same command whatever we are using in the non gui mode that will work mm -hmm. here or how? Okay, so in that scenario, we can uh, run multiple agents. So instead, so here we have a single agent, right? So same. Okay, Correct. the test is now completed. Yeah, I'll just show you know. So if you go back uh, to the edit pipelines, and uh, yeah, to the job. So here we have one agent, right? So same way we can have like Correct. multiple uh, agents, and uh, can add another agent job. So now we can add another agent here, right? So now we can add another agent, which is like your slave. So this will be your master. You can add all your slaves. In this way, you do not need to worry about the master slave. right? So what you can do is you can add another set here. And the point yeah. here is, here you can set the slave 1 as your agent pool. Here you can set your slave 2. Same way you can add another agent. Where you can use your mm -hmm. agent, uh, say another slave, right? So when you are uh, running it through Azure DevOps, there's a flexibility that you do not need to worry about the agent, uh, the master slave. You can even set all the machines as your agents, and you can run your test. Which is, uh, this machine can handle 1,000 users. The the second agent can handle another 1,000 users. The third one can handle another 1,000 users, or like so, whatever, like uh, based on its capacity. Even you can run 10,000 users to it. Mm, yeah. Right, so you can you can set up the same thing, like so that you can distribute the load here. Mm -hmm. Right, that how how it will distribute actually depend on the thread groups. We have ten users, right? So okay. each machine for will example, be ten, 10 yeah. users. Exactly. So for example, uh, you have you have like uh, one thousand users, right? And you have uh, your setup. Like for example, you're going to distribute it uh, in the same workload model. Like, for example, I would say uh, that. Uh, Mm. Okay, let me just tell this one. Uh, okay, let me even again just try this at a deployment group as well. Yeah, so this one you can try uh, where you can uh, uh, add multiple agents. Like this is another way you can add. So, okay, when it comes to this one, these uh, distribution of these agents, uh, what we can do is we can try all these in the same time, but when you try this one, uh, the deployment groups. So yeah, for mm -hmm. now I do not have a deployment group, but yeah, if you have a deployment group, you can deploy to the multiple uh, machines. Like if you see here, we can uh, deploy all the targets to the different machines. Like if you have, if we have this setup, then we can try this. But for now, yeah, I think we can. If I have a deployment group, let me just give a name for now. Yeah, okay. I I don't think I have a setup. Okay. okay yeah so for now yeah i what i'll do is let me check for because in several scenarios what did we do is we have distributed the load to each of these machines right for example if i have a script which which needs to run uh, okay take for example like 1000 users okay and i have to run yeah. 500 users for a particular script 250 users for a particular script and 254 users for another script so what i do is we used to separate that for each agents so the thing is you will get uh, response times for each of these script in each individual machines right because you do not want to distribute them so that is one way of doing it but i think we can uh, also try the deployment group but i can i'll just check and get back on this part uh, which is like sure, sure. to exactly replicate the same master slave but this is another way like you can um, use different agents for each and every script so that you can run it there so by doing this you can uh, use multiple machines you do not need to worry about the load Okay. Right. So while don GUI mode, we are are we going to give the names or how how it will run in command line script? 
Ah, uh, okay. So when it comes to the names, uh, what happens is, anyways, you have your name here. Like, uh, see, you are having your first script here, so you'll have a separate name here. For example, like script one dot jmx will be your name, and then if you have your second script in the second agent, so you are going to add the second uh, name here. And in distributed mode, we are giving as hyphen capital R, and we are providing the IP addresses of those VM machines, right? In the distributed mode, so th that that thing how it works here, like. Or it will pick automatically the with multiple LGs that script. Mm, here uh, it won't work as LGs. It will it will work as agents. So for example, you are going agents. to run okay. uh, in in that particular machine, right? So in that mm -hmm. scenario, that's what I'm saying. Like the the approach will quite change because uh, <laughs> okay. you are not going to run it as a master slave. You are going to run everything as a peer machines. Okay. So when you run it as a peer machines, you don't need to worry about the uh, command line mode of running it uh, like every individual machine. Or uh, like you're going, you're not going to uh, distribute the load. Instead, you're going to send that particular load to each and every machine, like a different set of loads for different set of workload models. So, for mm -hmm. example, uh, okay. uh, this particular agent will run uh, the uh, script one, and this will run script two, and this will run script three. So, you're going to distribute the load on that itself. So, you can automatically give uh, what's the load for this particular script. You can automatically define it here. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you can start running it there. Yeah. Right. In oh, case sure. of we have only one script and we want to divide a load in uh, all other A's and jobs, so how can we do that? Mm. Yeah, that already you do. You did it in the repos itself, right? I mean, you already have it in the file. No. Uh, and you're like, going to give the total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. In distributed testing, like. Uh, ah, oh, okay, okay. Uh, multiple uh, thread groups, right? Yeah, yeah. That's also simple. So nothing. It's so simple. So what you're going to do is uh, go to the here. So you have your threads uh, threads as 10, right? So here, since I have only one thread, I set it as J threads. So if you have it, uh, I think I even gave a demo on this uh, video. I just have it uh, recently pasted. So this is a, your first thread group, right? So you're going to give the name as threads. So instead, if you have multiple threads, you can name it as threads one. And same way, like you can uh, give the name. Like you're going to just name it, that's it. So yeah, it's going to be like threads one, threads two, threads three. And then you're going to come back to your uh, releases you're going to give the name oh, sorry where is it okay you're going to come to the releases here and you're going to just name it that's it so it's, it's so simple like you can you can you can uh, distribute the load here come back here give us j threads one and then copy uh, sorry just create another one like j threads two uh like this j threads two it's going to be the same thing like you're going to distribute the user here like 15 or whatever you want that's it it's so simple I have even uh, demoed this in the latest video. You can just watch it if you have time. Sure, sure. Where uh, I have uh, defined the same thing. So anyways, because the, the duration is going to be the same thing, the ramp up is going to be the same thing. So you do not want to distribute that. But the threads, yeah, you can give different names. Like for the first thread group, you can name it as J thread one. Second one, you can name it as J thread two and same way. So you can give names to the multiple thread groups and you can run it. That's it, you can distribute the loads easily. Yeah, thanks, Susan, for clarifying. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So, yeah, let's go back to the uh, releases. And, uh, yeah, I'm opening the releases now. So this is the one that we have executed. And you can go to the logs and go to the download all logs. And at this, if I open the file, let me extract it. So here we can see the releases. So that's the reason I'm coming uh, to this file. I'm just trying to, I mean, multiple people are asking, so we were trying to uh, get this downloaded to a location, so that's in progress, I'm just working on that. So if I get any uh, updates, I'll just let you know the videos. And then open this zip file here. Again, you have to extract it all. And then, uh, yeah, so it is the test 01, open the index.html, so here you can see all these response times so since i do not named it properly so yeah so this is how we can see the minimum maximum average response time the 90th percentile the 95th percentile and uh, the overtime whatever we want so the response over time so everything like whatever we need uh, we can see it in the uh, html mode um, you can see all these results here so active threads over time how many threads we have during the test and everything like whatever we want uh, in terms of the response times as well so everything you can see so this is how the test runs so any any doubt so far in this part like the results extracting it and getting it uh, 
So in uh, Jamie Tusk, right? Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Vasanth, uh, I have a doubt regarding that. Uh, what Satish told itself, it's remote, uh, remote testing. So when we that master slave setup, when we do it in multiple missions, we give that IP address, right? So here, when we are using agents, we don't know what uh, capacity that mission has. I mean, uh, like, yeah. are all the missions of uh, same capacity, the master and slaves? Uh, yeah, so that's a good question. See, what happens is uh, these missions, right? So we will definitely have an idea of, like what mission is it. Because if you see, uh, for now, uh, we are configuring uh, this as a hosted mission. This is something like from uh, Windows. But when you are in your project, you will be having a set of missions and you will have what what what's the configuration of that mission. Okay, okay. Uh, it will be listed yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You can all you can get all these missions. If you drop down, you can get all these missions, whatever you have. And you can get the configurations from the DevOps team, like who are configuring it. You can get it from them. Like what's the oh. configuration of it, like whether it's a cloud mission or whether it's on-prem mission or whether it's been a hybrid mission, whatever it is. You can collect that, those details from them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Satish. Uh, Satish. Something JMeter script we are giving as a listener's example, simple data writer with errors. So mm -hmm. we are giving the path to save the file in a CSV or dot JTL file. Okay. Yeah. So in the yeah. script, uh, if you provide a sim uh, simple data writer as a listener, okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. where it will save? Actually, we are giving the path uh, where we want to save. Example, we are using master path, master uh, machine like that mm -hmm. master path we are giving. Okay. But here, how we can set it? Yeah, so, so here we, we are just it. giving uh, as results.jtl, right? So automatically this will be uploaded in this system directory. So now I have downloaded the logs, right? So you can download from there. Okay. So you can't, so that, uh, for now, yeah, for now, uh, until I have uh, researched, so uh, I could find that uh, I was able to uh, upload it to the uh, local mission, like local in the sense of the agent pools logs mission. So that's what we do, did this year, upload the release artifacts. So where, where we are uploading it to this location, which is if I go to the download section, I can download all these results. Uh, in no, whatever the listener we have mentioned that that will be downloaded here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever, whatever you mentioned, whatever you add it in your command line prompt, yeah, it will work. So here uh, I have not mentioned in command, as, as the just, uh, yeah, in the uh, listener part of the script. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you add your, your listeners. So they will be mm -hmm. added automatically to your JMeter results. So okay. whatever okay. whatever results you want, like if you are if you are adding uh, any any amount of listeners. For now, I just added only the summary report, right? So in case if I'm adding multiple mm -hmm. reports, yeah, I can get those results. For example, what I'm saying you, what I'm telling you is, uh, if you have if you add any uh, results file here, right? Uh, any mm -hmm. results uh, listeners, sorry. So if you add uh, what what you're saying, uh, save response to file or what what was that? A simple data right, second. Yeah. Simple data right. Okay. So now you must have your JTL file, right? So if you open your JTL file, you can see that results. Okay. And this will be saved in your logs, which is in your uh, uh, the local uh, the the file that we have downloaded, right? So it will be saved there. Okay. So you can download it from there. You can get the JTL file. You can open it here. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Will. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So, any other any other doubts so far uh, in terms of these releases or in terms of this uh, results thing? I uh, wasn't either. We can specify this J threads in this command line, or else if we have different thread groups, we can specify it in script itself, right? And just mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. You can very well do that. See, when you when you are defining uh, like this, right? You have the flexibility to add the numbers, add or increase the numbers. In case okay. uh, if you want to uh, increase the load, right? Uh, you have to again. See that that's a kind of a pain job. Like you have to go inside here, open the files. You can you have to search for that script, and then you can change. You have to change. You can do it. Yeah, you can. If you click on edit, you can automatically change the numbers. But it's still it's advisable to uh, keep it here so that you do not need to worry about uh, uh, changing the numbers during the execution. You just okay. define a name, like something like a CSV parameters, and then you can do it automatically. It'll work. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So let me go back to the releases again. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there is another thing. Uh, in case if you are having any variables, for example, to add to your test, so you can also do it. So if I go to this uh, thing, so I have my releases here. So if you go to variables and uh, go to your variable groups, and if you want to add any values, you can very well add it here. Uh, 
which goes this one manage variable groups so you can create a variable group for example here and you can add for example if you if you have any secrets or if you have any username or something you can add it here and if it's something like a secret variable you can click unlock this button so that nobody can view it and same way the password you can add these values and then you can replace it very easily and yeah so you have your New variable. Okay, let me just keep it the same way. I'm going to save it. And in case if you want to uh, take any values from your Azure Key Vault, yes, you can very well link it if you have that set up. For now, let me. Okay, I have created this value, and let me go back to the library. So now we can see I have these two variables here. And if you want to uh, rename this value, it's just dollar and then open bracket and then you can enter this name and then you can save it in the file, in the, in the environments. So for example, I go to the releases here, to releases again, I did pipeline. So here I can see the variable groups. So you have link group, sorry. And then I can link this value. So whatever I've created uh, now, I can either, uh, uh, I can set the scope whether it can be to the releases or it can be to particular stage. So if I if it is want to be like particular if it is like releases, it can be for all the stages. But if it is like for particular stage, you can choose like which stage we need to have this. But for now, I'll just choose all these the releases so that you can it's like universally accessible to all these uh, stages, right? And then I can see what are the variables I have, and then I can come back to my pipelines. And if I want to change it, like if I want to add it, I can add this. Okay, I can just show you an example here. Mm -hmm. Link variable group. Okay. Okay, manage variable groups. For example, like if you want to add uh, what will change the number of threads, I can add it here. Save it. Come back to my releases. Go to variables, pipeline. Go to variables, variable groups, link. Yep. Link it. And now, I, if I want to use that variable, I can very well use it. So, if you want, I can see the threads number is 10. So, in case if you want to really use these values, like any variables, you can use this. Okay. So, that's about the variable groups. And then, what else we have? Stay, save. Yeah, we have to save it before. You come out of this thing and then yeah you have the releases and then what else we have variables we have the history so where you can see the history of the changes that we have did so whatever the changes that they did that we did like the deployment the releases everything and then if you want to make any changes to the releases yeah we can change back to the releases so always if you want to make any changes to the to the pipeline just click on the edit pipeline and you can make changes to this pipeline like for example like if you want to make any changes to the command line script you can edit it like whatever you want you can change it but the thing is like you have to go to the releases select the release which you want and then go to edit and then edit pipeline so this way you can get access to whatever changes you want and then you can make the changes then coming back to the releases here yeah so now yeah one of you have asked like how to schedule it right so coming back to here and uh let me edit the pipeline so once you click on edit pipeline you get access to all these things so there is this particular uh this what is this uh the lightning icon so if i select on this one you can see this continuous deployment trigger where if i enable this and this will create a release every time a git push occurs in the select repository so if someone like for example if the developer uh, adds any releases if we release any changes automatically this deployment will be triggered, which is the test will start to run every time whenever they make any changes. And if there are any, like, uh, if we need to run a particular branch, like, for example, if you want to run uh, the develop branch first. So most of the times what happens is we do not want to run the main branch, but instead we have to run the develop branch, which is the develop a code. At that level, it has been worked fine. And only then if it is, like, successful, we'll merge the changes to the main, right? So for that reason, we'll just choose uh, use usually the, the develop branch. Right? And we can also exclude the, uh, for example, like I can uh, exclude my main branch and I can only include my uh, develop branch so that all the changes will be running in the develop and not in the main. And then when I select this pull request, 
trigger. So here I can select which branch has to be like selected for this uh, pull request. Right. So this is one thing which I can make. And then the scheduling. Yep. I can just show you. So yeah, scheduling you asked, right? So here I can ed, uh, enable the schedule. I can even add any number of times. Like um, I can say, run it for in, in particular day, like at particular point of time, like at three o'clock in the morning or at five o'clock in the morning, I can run the test. I can set up the time, like which time zone I want to run this. I can run all these seven days. I can run many number of times here. So if you see, uh, I can run any number of times, like all the whole day, like for, for every one hour, I can run this test. And uh, even I can even, uh, check this so that only the uh, release will be running if the source of the pipeline has changed if there are no changes automatically they it won't run if i'm selecting this but if i'm selecting this if this will run only if there are any changes to the at that particular point of time right so uh, have you got it right the schedule thing yes yeah okay okay And then there is this another icon. So here, if you select this one, here you can. Uh, so this is for the total artifacts, the total task. But this is for this particular stage. So after release, I, do I want to artifact the folders or do if I want to schedule it? Yes, I want. I can even schedule this particular stage as well because if you see, we can add multiple stages, right? So I can even start run one of the stage. I do not want to run the entire stage. So stage, you mean? Uh, this will be running in the uh, dev environment, or the second stage will be. Uh, uh okay let me just make that one so this will be in your sit environment uh whereas this will be in your geometry load test this will be in your dev environment or whatever like okay you will have different environments like so even you can choose that as well like you can run only uh the dev environment test all the day rather than you're running it in a different environment right and yeah, so at which stage you want to run? So you just want to have it only manual, or you can run it after every releases or after every stages. So you can run like after this particular stage, you can run this, or else it can be running it in the same time. And if you want to do any pull request deployment, you can enable it. Or any pre-deployment approvals, yeah, you can enable it. And you, you can select the approval so that once they approve it, automatically uh, this will start to run. And uh, Yep, so deploy all in one sequence. Yes, that's what we do it normally. And then, okay, let me just select this. Okay, let me disable it now. And I'll close it. And then clicking on this one. So if you want to run it manual, yes, you can run it. Uh, if you want to run only manually, then you can select this. Otherwise, most of the time, if you want to automatically run this, yep, you can select this after release so that every time after release, automatically this test will start. But one thing is like when this particular uh, stage comes, so we can run only one schedule. We cannot have multiple schedules. We can just run only one schedule for uh, in the stage wise. And uh, yep. And then we can choose whether this can be a post deployment approval by selecting this icon on the right side. So this will allow us to. So if there is like uh, any approver who can approve it, automatically it will start to run. And uh, yeah, so that's what we have. And then, yeah, same way we can set it up for the other environment as well. And uh, yeah, so any any doubts so far in terms of the scheduling, this manual triggering things? No. Anybody else has any doubts in terms of this JMIT execution or in terms of setting up this release? Uh, so no. the, the, the dirt we have CSV files, right? So CSV and JMX we are uh, uploading in the same repo. Mm -hmm. From mm -hmm. there only it will access the CSV file, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sure, you're doing something. No, no. Uh, I mean, uh, same doubt. Like, uh, actually, my CSV part is also is there. When mm -hmm. CSV file okay. is there, uh, same repo. How okay. it will be take? Because we added the CSV with the browse to given some path in the local system. Right? Yeah. How it will be yeah. Okay. Actually, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. Even I have that same uh, query. I'm just trying it, but that's the reason uh, I'm using the variable groups so I can link my uh, values to the variable groups here. So I have to create uh, variables and then I can uh, replace it from here. 
So this is one thing which I'm trying, but for now I haven't uh, uh, successful. I'm just trying to uh, add a file and then I'm going to add this file to this um, script. So this is one thing which I'm trying. So I'll just let you know uh, once I'm uh, successful in doing this because uh, the CSV part you're saying, right? right. So in okay. terms of connecting, yes. connecting it, yeah. So usually we used to connect it through our uh, C drive or whatever the local location. But when it comes to the repo, uh, yes, I, I even do that face that same issue. Yeah, but I'll just try and then uh, we'll get back to another part. But I'm trying uh, to connect it through the secure file. Um, but for now, I, I'm not successful yet. But if I'm successful, I'll just let you know so that you can try that as well in the versions. OK, OK, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, sure. But uh, yeah, but we, we, we can try with, I have so far, I have tried it with uh, uh, simple variables, and I'm I'm tried doing it. And there is one more thing uh, where you can um, upload your values um, through the environment variables. But for now, um, in terms of the CSV, yes, I have I have I just said to try that. Yeah, if I just just completed, I'll let you know. Sure. Uh, but since the normal file upload will work perfectly, right? If you give just that file in the repository, same as uh, where the script is. Just file upload, but we don't give uh, that part in script. Usually, we give in bin folder, right? In JMeter, when we are running, mm, mm, yeah, uh, file upload. So same thing here. We have to just up, uh, upload that file in the repository where the script is. Will that work? Uh, you mean the CSV file? Yeah, CSV file. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So when you uh, so okay, see the file upload part works fine, but the problem here is when we are connecting it, right? So usually we give it as the location, right? So when it comes to location, we are normally give it as uh, the local location, which is which means the the local uh, file, like something like a C drive bin folder. But ah, okay. but we do not know what exactly is this location when it comes to the cloud or uh, when it comes to the Azure repo. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, so actually there is another way of doing it. Uh, I can just show you. I, uh, this is one thing which I tried. So for example, if I go to my releases, right? Um, and uh, this is one thing maybe we can we can try actually, if you can try, um, if I go to edit pipeline. So this is one thing. So if I go to my release artifacts, if I click on this three dots, uh, I can get the file name, which is the file location, right? Um, mm -hmm. So for example, like if I give that, Test.jmx. So this is the location, right? So my point here is um, we can give this location in the repos here, right? For example, if in the, in the replacement, in the replacement of that uh, file location, I can give this and I can try it. Maybe I can I can try it today or by tomorrow and then I'll let you know whether that worked. Because I, I was trying like several different options, but then nothing is working. But yeah, I, I'll just try this and then we'll let you know. Simply not specifying the path. CSV. Yeah, simply not specifying the path and just giving that file file below. name. Ah, file name. Yeah, that should also work, but uh, I it just needs to be tested <laughs> whether yeah. it's working or not. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll just note it down. And then, yeah. You have created one video like a uh, JMeter installation only once in the uh, repo, mm -hmm. and you have if you. Uh, paste that uh, JMX and that particular file in that bin folder, it will work, right? You have created one video like uh, every time installation is not required of the JMeter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's also there. Yeah, that's also there. Like we do, mm -hmm. we do not need to install every time. We can uh, just directly uh, run the test. Yeah, that's that's possible. But yeah, uh, the point here is like, uh, I think in that way, I, I remember I do not have any CSV. Maybe I can, I can try that as well because we have different ways of approaching it. Yeah. Maybe I can try that as well. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, if you can try and let me know if it worked, then yeah, I'll just let everyone know that it's working. Sure. 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 Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Any other doubts you guys have? It's a good session, actually. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, so if you guys have any uh, feedback, just let me know, uh, or else like what session we can conduct in our next bootcamp, just let me know so that I can prepare and then we can uh, meet on next bootcamp. If you have, guys have any idea, like if you want to know a particular thing uh, in terms of uh, performance testing or DevOps or anything, cloud or anything, just let me know, we can take it as a next session. Sure.
Yeah, that's okay. uh, we can okay. go for AWS. How to upload the script? That's we can do in the AWS part. Uh, AWS. sorry, what's that? AWS. AWS in the AWS account. I mean, okay. We are going to upload the JMeter script and running the test. Mm, okay. Next boot camp in that one. Uh, yeah, for now, actually, I do not have an AWS uh, uh, repo, like AWS account. So maybe I, we can try later. Uh, once I get okay. AWS account, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's one thing. And yeah, anything else we can try. Um, okay. like, uh, yeah, you can just let me know in the chat. We will just discuss and then yeah. we'll uh, plan our next bootcamp. Yeah, that should be fine. No problem. Okay. Wasn't one last question. Like, is yeah. there any limit to this? Like, uh, is like every organization can use this or how is it like is it free for n number of users the devops thing ah yes yes yeah yeah, yeah. it if you are in, if you are an organization they have azure devops yeah you should have uh, the alm platform thing which will give access to the uh, so that's something like a paid one so that will have more flexibility like you'll have a lot of other options as well Oh, okay. So yeah, since I'm using dev.azure, so when you are in organization, they, you'll have ALM platform or uh, something like. Uh, Similar to that HP ALM? Yeah, yeah, something like okay. ALM platform you'll get, which you can use uh, in your organization. Um, so yeah, that will be more useful and you have like a lot of options. But again, in terms of uh, JMeter, yeah, you, anyways, you're going to run it through JMeter with a number of users so that you can run it. But again, it depends on the agent mission. Like if the agent mission can handle the user, yes, you can very well run the test. Oh, okay. Yeah. So whatever we are setting up in the release pipeline, so it is a cost to the Azure or how? Or it will? No, no. Because we are using cost. our machines. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Using your agents, right? So see something you are using your uh, another machine to run the test. That's it. Uh, this is not something like an Azure where you're going to send the data or you're going to receive back data. This is something like you are going to use your repo. That's it. So uh, I don't think uh, it's like a completely it's a fully paid one because when you're getting a paid one uh, paid uh, your organization gets it. So they used to pay amount for uh, this hosting thing. So it's nothing like you're not going to pay anything for your individual tests or anything. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Sure. Now, how about the results once we ran Wilson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. we can get the results, right? Uh, something like this one uh, where we can download the results and you can get it. Uh, I think I've showed you. Uh, yeah. So once you download it, uh, I mean, like the completed test, you can just view all these results here. The response times, everything, the statistics, the errors, and same. You can okay. go through your charts. Yeah. And if you add any, if you add more number of listeners, you can view all those things here. That's it. Yeah. You can. This is just so simple. You can just see whatever the custom graphs. So the custom graphs will show you like whatever. Uh, uh, the listeners you added to your thing. Like if you add multiple listeners, you can add all the view all those results here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is there an option to automatically send these results to our email ID? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I told you. So that's the one particular thing which is like stuck for a long time. Like even the download part is also not working for me. So I'm just trying to uh, work on the download part. And once the download part was working, because this uh, email thing needs to have some SMTP setup, which I'm working on. So if it is like fixed, then yeah, I'll just let everyone know that. Yeah, yeah. that's in progress actually. Yeah, for a long time, I'd say. Yeah. But Jamie, uh, Jenkins will have that notification, trigger notification is there. Uh, yeah, yes, I think Jenkins have that. Yeah, Jenkins have it. Jenkins have, have it. Jenkins has it. And, uh, from the Jenkins, we have to run the job. Can we do that one in the next boot camp, Vasant? Ah, uh, yeah, maybe we can uh, do that one. Yeah, uh, JMeter plus DevOps plus Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah, yeah, we, we can try. Yeah, we can with Jenkins. Yeah, we can try that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can try that one in our next boot camp. Yeah, sure. Thanks, thanks, Asha. Thank you. Okay. Because we haven't also tried, we'll get knowledge on that one. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Sure, sure. But when it comes to Jens, Jenkins, I have run the job. I mean, a number of jobs I have run in, in the via webhooks and uh, I mean, mm, Polis. Yeah. Yeah, how can we use that one? We can add that one. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Yep. Hi, so, anybody else? Yeah, hi, Baska. Yeah. 
So earlier I got an uh, opportunity to integrate the JMeter with uh, Azure Pipeline. So I just uh, saw your uh, video on YouTube. And I, have, I have followed the same and I was uh, able to get uh, successfully. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thanks for the feedback. So did you uh, uh, had any CSV file in that? Did it work for you? Or is that with yes, the so CSV? Yes, so post this call, I will get a page the screenshot, so which I, how I followed in the real time and all, in the WhatsApp group. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Fine, fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you so yep. much. It helped me a lot. Thank you for your YouTube videos. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Could you please share the WhatsApp group link so we can join? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just share it to you now. Yeah. yeah, so anybody else has any doubts? Yeah, I think uh, if anybody is, if it is comfortable, then yeah, we can um, close the session and then we'll plan some time, uh, meet some time in the next week. And thank you so much, guys. Um, uh, if you have any feedbacks, just let me know in the uh, WhatsApp channel. Any, uh, just let me know what your feedback are if you want to understand anything. Yeah, and again, uh, we are adding a lot of interview questions in the folders. And uh, just go through it and then um, it'll be helpful for you if you're uh, attending any interviews or anything. And uh, I think we are able to see like a lot of people are sharing opportunities as well. So please don't uh, uh, hesitate to watch our channel and share whatever messages you have. It will be helpful for everyone. And yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for joining. And we'll meet in the next bootcamp. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Vasant. Have a great weekend thank for you. you. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And if anybody's interested to take a boot camp, yeah, please do let me know. Uh, I can also, uh, I'm happy to uh, host you. Uh, I can take a boot camp from your, so we can, we can share everybody's knowledge in the boot camp and then it'll be helpful for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah.